This footage was not meant to be leaked to the public. If you want to just go check out the raw footage, check the timestamps and you'll see where it begins. But now you're here, let me give you some context about how this all started. There are these things called Twitter spaces if you're not familiar and there's a person in the poker community called Will Jaffe. Now he's been doing this Twitter spaces, they'd be getting many, many hundreds of people watching every single time at once, so probably thousands over the whole space. And they've been pretty bomb, they've been pretty crazy, the people have got out of line, they've been really intense. And in this space, only yesterday, I woke up to hearing Doug Polk and Matt Berkey having a conversation. And the conversation was based around Doug saying, hey Matt, we should be starting a podcast together. Imagine how many clicks it would get. We would be going back and forth, disagreeing with each other. We wouldn't be in an echo chamber. And Matt Berkey was saying, no, Doug, you've been trashing my name for the last few years. It's kind of crazy that you would want this to happen. I don't respect you as a person. I don't respect your ability to discern what truth is or even to care what truth is. I don't want any of this. But it was still relatively polite. At this point, I was just like, what is going on? Like Doug, he called him a fraud. He went after his business. He made multiple videos about him. And I just felt like I had to say something. Now, this is where I jump in and the conversation turns to a different topic about something that happened between me and Doug many, many years ago. I don't know if many of you remember this, but he made a video about me that got 700, 750,000 views. I don't remember exactly how many. It was a, a complete hit piece. Now, at this time in my life, I was going through something very dark, which I've not shared publicly. This video brought upon types of attacks, which you'll hear in the footage, that was so destructively personal and untrue and painful and triggering. And I know a lot of people don't like that word triggering, but you'll hear the context and I, I'm sure you'll understand. My close friends will know this, but it, it was a truly dark time for me. I'm in a much better place now. I know there's a few people that like to paint me as, oh, he's playing the victim. I'm not a victim. I'm super grateful for what happened for that and many, many other things that have happened in my life. And the reason that this is coming to light now is because I found the strength in myself to address the person that was harassing me and my wife and so many other people in the community for many years. I would just like to say thank you so much for the overwhelmingly positive support. Shout out especially to Justin Bonomo and Matt Berkey, two very prominent voices in the poker world, speaking on my behalf for what is actually the first time anybody in the poker world with a big platform has spoken on my behalf on this topic. Honestly, I was, I was crying both times when it happened. The first time when Matt Berkey did it was during the spaces and you'll hear in the, in the footage, I was very emotionally charged. I'm sure you'll understand exactly why that is. It was still relatively easy for me to be able to hold my own in a debate and in a conversation because it was such a clear cut one. Even in that extraordinarily emotional state, I managed to articulate myself well enough and it seems like the vast majority of people that have heard it have understood my side of it and are willing to see Doug for the liar and the scumbag that he is. And I don't throw those words around willy nilly. And I'm sure once you hear what you're about to hear, you'll agree with me. Peace. But I'm going to bring in uh, Charlie Carroll because his, his goals might align with this. I know he's done some. Um, what's going on, Charlie? Good, man. Uh, and, and uh, isn't it like fucking 3 a.m. by the way <laughs> for you guys 420 bro 421 actually uh, I just kind of wanted to point out a little bit of gentle hypocrisy on the on the side of Doug uh, brother with all the love you've been you've been tweeting about me and making videos about me for years now and every single time I offer the hash it out in a debate format there's zero response from you but you just carry on tweeting and you know, just throwing around ad, hominem, ad hominems and everything. So what's that about? How, how, can you, how can you stand on the leg that says, I want to have this kind of divisive debate show where people are pushing back against each other, where it's obviously not part of your brand to have people push back against you? Um, well, I guess for starters, it has always been a big part of my brand for people to push back against me. My problem with you is that you are not a real person. <laughs> okay yeah carry on what 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 are, what are, some, I mean, what are some specifics apart from just like 
randomly throwing around childish insults. What what are some specifics that you'd you'd like to kind of throw at me? Well, like, I, I don't want to have a podcast with someone who, who views it as like an important part of their social media strategy to defend pedophiles on Twitter. So, like, that's so, just not... so, so just just go really specific on that, because that's one of the worst things that you could ever throw at somebody. Uh, by the way, especially somebody that's been a victim to pedophiles. I've not once defended pedophilia on Twitter. I've not once defended pedophiles on Twitter. My attitude has been if we want to stop children from being molested as children, Sorry, I, I'm, I'm a little bit heated right now. But if we want children to stop being molested, we need to have more empathy to preventatively get in the way before it happens. That's my position. And I get, no, I get, I get, no, wait, 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 let no. me finish. Because I get that if you disagree, whatever, dude. But to then levy that as, a, as an idea that, oh, now he's supporting the act of pedophilia is so fucking gross, man. I don't know if you see it. I, I can only imagine that you do. Because it's such an ABC type of logic. And I can only imagine that there's some level of deep insecurity or fear or whatever the fuck's going on in your psyche. To imagine that's, that's even like a, a reasonable thing to levy at somebody. I just don't understand the amount of pedophile related content that you put out on the internet. Dude, it's been like three tweets out of thousands of tweets. Two were polls and one was me saying, hey guys, in like this... In, in like a five, in, in a tweet five years ago where it was like, here are some unpopular opinions. And it was something along the lines of, if you want to get rid of child molestation, have more empathy for these people. That's not me supporting them. That's not me creating content. That was one tweet that you blew up and sent into a video that was a hit piece that hundreds of thousands of people saw that you spinned into the idea that I was supporting pedophilia. It was intentional. It was disgusting. And it was, it was such a fucking idiotic thing to actually bring up in now in a conversation. What, how, how the fuck can you possibly well, defend that? I defend that by I don't think you should be tweeting supportive content for dude, pedophiles. Dude, if you're going to say supportive, what the fuck do you mean by that? Like, take 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 a deep breath, and I probably need to as well. But just just think for a second. What do you mean by supportive? Because I've been a victim of pedophilia. So has my wife, and you know that. And it's been a huge part of our lives, and it's destroyed our lives. I've seen my wife scream in utter terror, reliving the things that she's been through. It is the last thing on earth that I would possibly support, and you fucking know it. So what are you saying? I think that your responses about the subject are very weird. I don't care if you think the responses and are I, weird. What you don't do is I you don't paint I, other I, people as the, pedophiles. I literally get hundreds or thousands of messages every single fucking year by people going like, oh, Doug says you're a pedophile. Doug says you're a nonce. Apparently it happened again on the stream a few days ago. You cannot possibly for the life of yourself look yourself in the mirror and think that going from, oh, he tweeted something about how to prevent child molestation is possibly like a, a, a logical jump to go to he supports pedophiles. Are you that retarded? That, that, that is obviously not what my tweets or Get your the tweets say. Fuck out exactly. of here, Doug. I've had thousands of people saying, Doug says you're a nonce. Doug says you support pedophilia. You literally, in this conversation, said you support pedophilia. Why are you tweeting in support of pedophiles? Do not try and fucking pedal back on it. It's gross. It's disgusting. The I mean, fact that you okay, can so, even so, support right, so that for a second tweet tweet, is if we're gonna absolutely go tweet tweet, nonsensical. If, if, if we're going to go tweet by tweet here, you had a tweet from in February of this year. People are like, pedophiles should be castrated or killed. And have their top porn searches as just turned 18. Yeah. Or watch animes or watch anime where they draw teenage girls and sexualize them. Yeah. Or spam pay, pay only filters, model, only, fil only fans models who use youthful filters. Yeah. There is so, so much projection. Exactly. It's, gro it's, gross <laughs> that it's gross that people sexualize kids. It's gross that there's anime out there that paints people as 14 years old. It it's gross that you can just turn on Netflix and there's an anime that's sexualizing a 14-year-old child, but it's okay because apparently she's 18. That is gross stuff, and I fucking hate that people project their own insecurities. And maybe, hey, hey maybe what's that's what you were doing, dude. Maybe you're so uncomfortable because you have some pedophilic courage because I know you like to fucking project. I know you like to project that Jane Anders is a scammer because you're actually the person that stole from it. Well, I know you like to project on the... No, 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 let me finish. I know you like to project that the crypto people were all scammers when you lead them down Coinflex. Maybe you're projecting because you have pedophilic urges. Now, I don't actually think that, but listen to how fucking insane that is to have somebody say that to you. 
My take is I don't think you should be tweeting about pedophiles on Twitter. No, that's not your take. Your take is, hey, look at this person that's called Charlie Carroll. If you haven't heard of him, he supports pedophiles. 700 fucking 50,000 people looked at that. It was so fucking painful for me, man. It was so fucking painful for me because I've been a victim of ped- I've been a victim of child molestation. My my granddad fucking raped me as a child, and to have thousands of people message me over years and have my girlfriend see it, have my friends see it, have all of my family see it, it's fucking painful, man. And to just say, oh, my positions, you shouldn't be tweeting. That's a fucking lie. It's fucking disgusting, man. Well, let let me put it like this: when I make my videos, I make it based on the content that I see and what where I find the humor in that content. And if I see somebody who is aggressively trying to have empathy for child molesters... Dude, dude, the way, even the way that you're saying it right now, aggressively I mean, trying to have I empathy... Thought. I have fucking empathy for everyone, you absolute piece of shit. It's yeah, not that sorry. I'm specifically saying but, only so child molesters. If you're not, if you're I'm not saying, gonna be able to I'm, reel it in here, buddy, we might, we might have to... Right, you gotta I'll, reel it in. After you, dude. After you. I, I want to say... Uh, like my wife is a, is a therapist and I'm not an expert in this field at all, but anybody knows that there's a common saying, which is that abusers abuse uh, the people who have been abused as kids are often the ones who end up doing it. And I, I do think what Charlie's tweet, I think it, I think it got misconstrued at the time was just saying that we should just understand, try to understand where it's coming from. A lot of the people that end up abusing are have are ones who have been abused themselves and they have not had proper psychiatric care. I don't know if you can speak to that a little, Charlie, before this gets too out of hand, but I do feel that, like, Charlie tweeted things in, in a way that could sort of seen be seen as supporting pedophiles, but I don't think it was, and I do think, regardless of of what the intent was, that, that things got out of hand. So I don't know if you have any thoughts on that, Charlie, but but I, yeah, I, no, I don't want this to get out of hand. Like, No, I, I, I feel you, brother. And I get the five years ago when I made that tweet, that says the best way to reduce child molestation is to have empathy for child molesters. I get that now in hindsight, I was a young, dumb kid that didn't know what the internet was like. And I wouldn't make a tweet like that anymore that would be so left for interpretation. Now, if you speak to experts in these fields, what I'm saying isn't like a, a crazy thing. It's actually the most commonly accepted idea of, of, of how to approach these kind of situations. So like the scientific literature backs it up, the experts back it up. And my, my own personal experience, it's a very healing experience to be somebody who's a victim of child molestation, to have forgiveness for the people that did it. And it's actually a very powerful experience to be able to do that. Again, this isn't just child molesters. This is, this is murderers. This is rapists. This is fucking pe- thieves. This is somebody that pissed you off down the road. So it, like if you can have empathy and forgiveness for absolutely everybody in the world, the world's going to turn into a much better place. And that's the position that I have. And I, I completely get the, the tweet that I sent out was, was really stupid to say on Twitter in just a few, a few characters. It was, it was a pun, but Doug, you can't pretend that you didn't twist that to your own fucking clickbaitiness. You can't pretend that you didn't try and turn that into a hit piece. Like on, honestly, like speaking with the fucking God watching, do you think that you tried to manipulate the facts to spin a story? So when I saw the tweets, my first instinct was this guy is tweeting, trying to protect child molesters. And I'm not okay with that. Dude, hey, Charlie, Charlie like, just let, let, just let, 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 let finish. Let, let him just finish like his that. point and then, and then go ahead, Charlie. Okay. Sorry. I know, I know yeah, you fired yeah, 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 out, yeah. but just let, let the guy to say what he got to say about it. So your original tweet that said that, like, we need to have more empathy for child molesters. I just want you to recognize how to the rest of people that sounds like, because most people have kids or they're around kids. And, and this, these are like the, the kinds of people that give them nightmares. And then your tweet is about how we need to have empathy for those people. And it's just like, why are you fighting this battle? Like, these are some of the worst people. There should not be uh, empathy for these people, in my opinion. Everyone gets their own opinion. But then on top of all of those things, you're not like taking a moment to address that like there was something wrong with those people. And you're also basically throwing yourself into an area where it's going to be incredibly unpopular, goes down a super dark road, and has and all of this for what? To like try and be semantically correct over what op- the optimal way to handle a child molester is? Like I like the I, like why are you even doing this? Is my question. Wait, wait. 
with all due respect, your logic is fucking retarded. It's it's so bad. Like, first of all, the, I'm glad you the, said with all due respect. Otherwise, that might have been a bit a bit hurting. But that was fine. <laughs> yes, okay, uh, your logic is retarded with no respect whatsoever. And so let, let, let's just break down what you're saying. First of all, the tweet that I said was the best way to prevent child molestation. So for you to frame it as though like I'm trying, like the point of the tweet is to support child molestation or to ch support child molesters, that's obviously not it. Like as somebody who has many friends and a wife and myself who have been survivors of child molestation, it is, it is a very important topic in my life. I've seen how much pain it causes. Uh, so what I want to do is think, okay, how can we address this in a way that is going to reduce the amount of children that get molested? Now, I know, for, I, I know that you said something like, well, why don't you just make it clear that, or something along the lines of like, you, you didn't make it clear that child molestation is a bad thing. I thought that was implicitly understood. I thought that well, it was part of the conversation. We all just agree that child molestation is bad. But if you want me to fucking say, I think child molestation is the worst thing that you could ever do to a child. Okay, now let's have a conversation. But that, that okay, that, that is just all aside. The fact is that I tweeted about here's how some here's how I think we could reduce child molestation, and you've turned it into this many year long thing where you're 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 implying and sometimes just outright saying that I'm a pedophile or I'm supporting pedophiles or anything like that. Like the jump to go from A to B is horrendous. Like logically, it just makes absolutely no sense. And the fact that you're now trying to spin this as though like oh well I just disagree with the thing. No, I just literally had fucking three years of my life of being triggered all the fucking time. And don't worry, I'm tough enough that I can handle it now. But when you first made that video about me, I was in such a dark place. You have no fucking idea how bad it was. And having somebody call me the thing that really destroyed my life and the, the life of my, my wife, because some guy made a video on it, it's, it, it, it is utterly trash. I think if I can jump in really quickly here before this continues to spiral, I understand that we're talking about a specific incident, but I think that uh, the more underlying point here is speaking to like why I was so hesitant to agree to do some sort of one-on-one. -on -one. And what it ultimately boils down to is when Doug doesn't respect you, he will never take the time to think deeply or critically about anything that it is that you're saying. Instead, he will jump to the first conclusion that fits a narrative that can be twisted into a meme and dunk on you in whatever capacity he chooses so that, uh, you know, it drives eyes. It betters his brand, whatever. From a business tactic, that all makes a ton of sense. But if you're going to find, or if you're going to, if you're going to attempt to find some sort of sympathy from your peers or, you know, uh, have, have a reasonable community that you can work within, it's going to be really difficult. Because you just become a teardown king. And I think what Charlie's ultimately speaking to here is that there was zero benefit of the doubt given when you read the tweet. The immediate snap to judgment is this guy's a Looney Tune. He's talking about protecting pedophilic or uh, pedophiles. And I'm going to take to my platform and alert the masses that Charlie Carroll believes pedophilia is okay. And this is obviously an extreme example, but... Uh, it's probably the most notable one because this guy is openly saying he's coming from a traumatic place and not everybody's gone through hard shit like that. So maybe it's difficult to sympathize or empathize with him, but like he is very openly saying that he had one of the worst things that you could ever imagine happening to a child happen to him. And that's the place from which the tweet was coming. And instead of meeting that with any level of humanness, you used it as a jumping off point to villainize this guy and demonize him in the community in which he earns. To me, these are the reasons why I have zero respect for you as a man. These are the reasons why I would never in a million years consider doing this hot take back and forth. It's not about not wanting to get disagreed with. I don't care about that. I grew up arguing my entire life. I grew up in an Italian household. It's about not being able to sit across from somebody that you think is just not human, only sees the world through dollar signs, and everybody is just the next person that he can step on to benefit himself. That, the only reason we're talking that's here... That's really not... 
that's really not the situation in this specific instance. I have no business overlap with Charlie. What this is, is Charlie posted You're tweets. You're in the same community. You're in the same that, community. That's the business overlap. Yeah, we're, it's we're local relevant competing story. businesses, even though yours is obviously a lot bigger. And I, before Doug tries to I, fucking spin this, because it's obviously a slander, I just want to reply oh yeah, to before, Berkeley and before say... Before I get to talk... Like, yeah, here, like, let, let Doug speak here, just because Berkey addressed him. I, I just want to say quickly, thank you, Berkey. It's the first time that I've ever heard somebody speak on my behalf on this issue in the community. So thank you. Okay, so my, my, my stance here is actually much more simple. I had no ulterior motive in it other than the fact that uh, I feel like it needed to be said, but child molesters are the scum of the earth. And I am not someone that's a believer in having a lot of empathy to try and understand them better. Uh, personally, um, I think these are just about up there. I mean, it's pretty much the same as the murders. These are the absolute plague to our society. And I think people that tweet where it's kind of vague as to why, but to have em empathy for the child, the child molesters, I just think that that take is just so wrong and off base that it needs to have a strong reaction of, no, we are not going to have empathy for child molesters. That's ridiculous. And then for you to then assume that I know that, uh, your history or whoever around you's history because I say that and respond like that, like I don't know, de facto know what has happened to you or not happened to you. All I get is 140 characters of explaining why we need to have empathy for child molesters. Hey, hey Doug, let me, let me ask you a question, Doug. So, you know, I, I make a lot of content like this as well about things that have happened in the past. So in this situation, I guess I would wonder if, you know, I'd like to get in touch with the person first if I'm going to make a video. Like normally if I try to make videos, I try to get in touch with the people that are the people involved just to get their side of it as well too because Charlie brought up a pretty good point. You know, you basically – made a video, got 700 and some thousand views. I haven't seen the video. I, I, maybe it was, I think it was maybe some years ago, right? I, I, maybe I saw it back then, but I haven't seen it in a while. But I guess it is a pretty interesting question. Something I think about a lot. You know, what responsibility as a content creator that's able to get 500,000 views for a video that you make, what responsibility do content creators like us have for doing our due diligence and really researching what we're going to say, especially knowing that this stuff is going to live on the internet forever about a person? Do you, mind, do you mind if I, uh, if I jump in here? I, I just want to say it's it's one example out of many. And, the you know, the, the stuff around me, it's not super important. Like, I, I've moved past. I'm actually fucking grateful that it happened. Uh, it really, really helped strengthen me towards other people's perceptions. So, like, I'm happy to put that under the fucking bridge and accept that if Doug isn't going to want to, you know, take it down or whatever, fuck, whatever. Let's move on. But what we're looking at here is we're part of a community that has this kind of tyrannical overlord, and I, I'm obviously exaggerating here from the kind of archetypal standpoint, that people were genuinely scared to speak out against. And I've spoken to so many big creators, big people in the sphere that have, pub that have privately supported me. And I, I think Matt has had a really similar uh, experience. I think Jay Nandez, who's also here, has had a similar experience. So many people have said privately to me, I'm so sorry that happened. Doug's an asshole. I can't believe he did that. But when it comes to the public sphere, there's this air of fear that I've experienced myself that like, oh, what if I'm in the next video? What if hundreds of thousands of people are going to now see a lie about me or a spin about me? And the, the fact is, I, I, I think it's, it's just like one example, the thing that you did to me. Uh, it's one example out of a series of different examples. You did the exact same thing to Jay Nandez that we're now finding I out. You I want to go back. I want to go back. I want to go back. I found the original tweet. You deleted it, so I had to dig it up. Do you know what the original tweet was that I took a problem with? Do you know, Charlie? Yeah, it was something along the lines of if you want to uh, reduce child molestation, you've got to have empathy for child molesters. No, the best, it, the, be, the best way to the best way to attack to yeah. You you tell me, I can't remember. It was, it, yeah, it was like the best. I had it, and then my YouTube thing just froze, and now I can't have it anymore. But um, God, the, be, the best way to reduce child molestation is to have empathy for child molesters. I think was word for it. Yeah, that sounds right. The best okay, way. So, yeah. so, so that's exactly what I've been saying. Is like. I'm talking about how yeah, to reduce child molestation. 
but but that that is just like I, I think you're just essentially trolling to get to get feedback from that. What? Like because because that that tweet is so insane that it's just too much for people to handle. This, this is I why will, he. I will, this is I will, why I will he bet you. you projecting, I'll, though. I'll bet you a hundred thousand dollars that if we get a group of experts together, we'll find we'll find at least a bunch of them yep, that but, will support yep, what I'm that's saying. Not what, that's not what you're doing on Twitter. What you're doing is you're sending that into people who are like, "Oh, it's a nice Tuesday. Oh, it's sunny outside. Oh, they're at a bit baseball game," and then they just see your tweet. What? And then they're, tw- they're just seeing your tweet on their timeline. I I'll yeah. give you the benefit of the doubt and assume you're just pretty tired right now. I I honestly don't know what you're saying. Look, just, just reshift it, right? Like. If it's a woman who tweets something along the lines of the, 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 so, so, anything about abuse, right? You would never assume that they didn't have experience in that realm, right? So to jump to the conclusion that obviously Charlie is just engagement farming here, it's just a massive projection on how you see Twitter. Like you use Twitter as a sheer business platform. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. The problem is, is the wake of dead bodies that you leave behind in the process, because everybody in this industry is fair game to you. There is absolutely nobody who's off limits and there is no need for any depth or critical thinking whenever it comes to deciding to dunk on somebody. Once you find something that you think is a meme, you go. The issue I have here is that I do not think Twitter is an acceptable place to go to bat for defending child molesters. No, stop, stop. You're you're doing this lawyering bullshit. No, you're I'm just not doing you're just bullshit. digging it. Yes, because we're not talking about pedophilia. We're talking about every single instance that you've done this to people who have. Okay, you want to talk about done... you want to talk about other instances, Matt? We can talk about other instances. But no, I'm telling you, not... in, this, in this specific instance. I think it's unacceptable to post kind of cryptic-ish tweets about why we should like, be defending child musters. I'm not okay with that. Okay, is there a world where you think that you could be wrong? Muster. Is is there a world where you think that that stance could be wrong? No. Right. So so that's the problem, Doug. Do you understand? No, I, I, I'm I'm you, you on the are an end all be all people. You are just an end all be all, and you use pedantic arguments in order to ensure that you're protected and that there will be some people who will rally behind that. Because if you message it such that Doug Polk believes that pedophiles are bad, there will be plenty of people who will say, Fuck yeah, I support that. Pedophiles are bad. That's not even the conversation that's being had. The you thing just is, twist Charlie fucking narratives. Tweet, he could have tweeted something that made way more sense than his original tweet. Who cares, man? Who cares? We've gotten to the core of what the tweet meant. He's openly admitted that he could have worded it better. Why are you dragging a guy based off of the word choice that he used when because, it's abundantly because, clear that that's not words, what the intent was? Because words have meaning. Bro, you're not a fucking lawyer, man. That's not the way the real world operates. And this is what I've been dragged for for years, is that nobody wants to dig into the nuance. Nobody wants to try to apply some sort of fucking context or understand that we speak in hyperbole sometimes, that exaggerations can be used because we're humans. We have emotions. We don't just operate on some robotic platform where we're just going to find the angle. And my emotions are when I go onto Twitter and I'm scrolling through my feed, and someone's on there on just a tirade about how, what, how we need to have more empathy for child molesters. I feel like that's pretty fucked up. I'm allowed to have that same emotion and that same take too. No, I dude, get to you're, 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 you have a responsibility very, to a platform of half a million people. Yeah, you're very welcome to have that, that opinion. And I've offered you so many times the ability to actually have a conversation, whether privately or publicly, and be beyond the YouTube editors and the 240 characters. And every single time, you've not only not said no, you've just not even replied, but just carried on posting memes about me or the way I look or my wife or fucking uh, whatever else you've you managed to What did I go after your wife? When did I go after you, your wife? So you, you screenshotted a picture of me and my wife and said something about how it looks like we're starting a cult or something along those lines. And anyway, I, I I don't personally care about all of the different things that you said. You even implied that the charity that I was starting was a scam. All, th- thanks for that, by the way. It's fucking destroyed me at the time, but I'm all right now. Uh, the, the point is that 
you've been backed into a logical corner here. Matt is being extremely articulate about the issues that you're having. And all of your defense is, well, I just don't want to be on Twitter and see some guy defending this. You're, you're ignoring like 99% of the things that we're saying. You're not taking any accountability or responsibility for the things that you've done. And you're acting like a child that's throwing his toys out the pram and just trying to fucking, like, like Matt said, just find some semantic argument that makes it sound like, oh, I'm the good guy now because I don't like child molesters. Well, fucking no shit. Nobody likes child molesters. That's implicitly there in the conversation. You don't need to fucking say you virtual signaling asshole <laughs> I fucked that last bit virtual signaling fuck <laughs> dang this why don't you uh, take over as the host here buddy <laughs> this, this, right, this, place, this place is getting out of this place getting out of line dang why don't let's 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 propose maybe a different maybe a Sorry, different guys, topic I... or something you know I know I know I know people enjoying it some afterthoughts so obviously the majority of people are saying that Doug came off very horrendously in that. And I do agree, obviously, that's that was my position. But I don't want to put all of the blame on one person. Now, a society often receives the leader that they deserve. And what that means is that there's the kind of like mean or mass or average consciousness that is projected towards the election scene, assuming that it's not completely corrupt, and sometimes even if it is, that will be determining the kind of leader that we get. So we got a, a bunch of trolley people, we get a trolley leader. If we got a bunch of kind people, we elect a kind leader. And Doug was, in essence, the the leader of the poker sphere for a really long time he was the most influential he had the most followers the most people standing behind him supporting him and we have to ask ourselves why that is <coughs> so over the last day i've been watching really carefully people's responses and very very many people are quick to point the finger of blame at doug without wanting to take a look at themselves. And just like before, just like when people were hounding me or Jay Nandez or Berkey or Tom Dwan or Phil Helmuth or whomever Doug pointed his audience towards, there's still this essence of wanting to hound Doug, even though it's a lot more justified, even though he's actually done terrible things, there's still this kind of witch hunt attitude without this layer of empathy. Now, Doug is a complicated person. He's going to have had his own array of experiences. He's going to have a lot of things that will have happened to him in his childhood that led up to him being the person that hurt so deeply that he didn't know how to stop himself wanting to hurt other people. And he wouldn't have had the people around him to be able to teach him, okay, when you're hurting, this is how you cultivate patience. This is how you cultivate trust of the world. This is how you cultivate kindness and forgiveness and peace within yourself. Now, I actually didn't have too much of that either with the help of uh, <coughs> some uh, psychedelics in the past and some deep ass meditation. That's that's how I came to to terms with my, my trauma. And which, by the way, a lot of people have been saying uh, I've got this kind of victim mentality. My granddad raping me doesn't even reach top five worst things that's happened to me in my life. I just don't talk about it. The only reason that this came up in this context is because I was being attacked for a very specific thing that I said. So let's put that aside for a second. I'm a real tough cookie. I'll be okay. <laughs> when we're looking at Doug, we can't just see a bad guy. We have to be able to say, okay, these are the qualities that we love. You're so funny behind a camera. You're so good at communicating. You're so great at making this, this content. You're so good at articulating ideas in a way that people can understand and resonate with on a large scale. We love that about you. We don't like it when you bully people. We don't like it when you lie. We don't like it when you scam people with coin flex. You know, scam, scam is a loaded word, but lead people to a scam. There has to be a road for redemption. Otherwise, he's just going to keep doubling down and doubling down or run away and won't really have that opportunity to learn.
<coughs> we have to do better than he did. And also, we have to look at ourselves. I'm seeing innumerable people stand up for me now. Now it's a little bit more vogue. Now it's a little bit more easy. The same people that were laughing at me, getting harassed and bullied, the same people that were joining in the, the hateful bandwagons towards me. And you know how many people have apologized for it? A few. Shout out to Justin Bonomo. Shout out to Will Jaffe who did it on the, the Twitter space. And a lot of people that don't have, maybe like a few other people that don't have as big a platform. And I appreciate that so much. Not because sympathy means anything to me, but it means that I've at least managed to help somebody grow. I've at least managed to show somebody what it, what it looks like when a person's genuinely hurt. Like I could have gone into this Twitter space completely stoic. I could have meditated beforehand. I could have left my emotions at the door. That's actually one of the things that made me so successful at poker is that if I want to close down my heart and go into the fucking heart of stone, shout out to that book if anyone knows it, then I can. But I decided to speak emotively and it woke a lot of people up to what it feels like because there are empathetic people out there. In fact, we're all empathetic on a deep level, even if not all of us are connected to it viscerally. And a lot of people saw that there was a human being on the other side of the mob that they might have they might have been a part of. So don't be so quick to judge. There's a lot of people out there and every time you decide to join a mob or you say something cruel to another person online, whether you think they deserve it or not, there's a human being on the other side of it. That doesn't mean be flimsy. It doesn't mean be a wet flannel. Be analytical, be critical, be strong. People need punishment if they do something wrong. If a person molests a child, they goddamn need to go to prison. They need to go somewhere away from children. They need to have that punishment from the universal karma or from a fucking society, probably from both. Be critical, be analytical, but always be embedded with love and compassion. And this is what is at the root of so much of this is that we live in a society where empathy for other people is a radical idea. And that is a true sign that we live in a completely sick society. So if we want to make a difference, you start with yourself. Peace.